Well, here we are again. This is an epitrochoid, I think I've pronounced it right. It's basically generated by a little circle going round a big circle and uh, the uh, little circle has a radius in it um, which is in this formula is D it's uh, the things are used for um, well probably the most famous is either a roots blower or uh, a Wankel engine or Wankel engine. Now you can write expressions into this text editor which you can't actually write them, you have to write them in like a double bracket on because you can't divide directly sort of thing but uh, that's no problem. So you write the X and Y expression down and then if you click this it'll uh, highlight the brackets or parentheses or parentheses um, and make sure you haven't missed any because uh, it's easy to do <clears throat> so those are the two formula that we just saw and oh, I wish I could find this little dividing line to pull these windows about before I do that, I'll uh, just copy that. So, Control C. Come on. Drives me mad, this is every time I want to shift a window. And then we've got the animation node tree here. Uh, this is a sub program. And this is an expression node. And I think it's in layout. Anyway, you bang that in and you'll get an error message for, in this case, R. But, I mean, if you then uh, put a new input, call it R, you'll get an error message for little r. So you have to go right through the whole thing and uh, till you've sort of identified them all. Then a loop input and uh, well you can see what I've done there just added a new parameter and plugged it into the uh, expression box that's expression box for X um, to get uh, T or time we divide index by uh, the step Combine vectors, object transform output, which the top one, make sure it's highlighted, uh, which is position, that's rotation, scale, we don't want either of those. And we have a little sphere, which you can see in the bottom picture is a little red dot. And then export it as a vector list. There is logic to this. Well, it's all logic, actually, but it doesn't appear so when I first started. Then we go into the program itself to invoke sub-program, which is that bottom bit. Spline is the same as curve, so I've already put a Bezier curve in the bottom. You can see it, it's that orange thing. The... Uh, shut all that down for the time being uh, that smooth bezier it does smooth it but it does, so it does some very very strange things 0.3 to 0.35 is about where it smooths anything else it goes completely ape make sure you've checked that little spline box else nothing will happen now it looks if you could put that bevel depth on there I don't quite know how there, so I do it here. I just put a little circle in, go into my curve modifier, and 
with a bevel I just put the bezier circle in that allows me just to texture the thing and you know everybody can see it then I don't know how well I'm explaining this um, if you want it to uh, run through oh so yeah I forgot about this um, I just duplicated this so uh, control shift D and it'll reconnect it all up because it is exactly the same thing bar of course the expression is different for Y as opposed to X so uh, you just go into that top thing copy the Y expression I'm going to join that up because we're finished with that um, now press N we're finished with that Press T, we've finished with that. And we'll come down here. Uh, time info node, that just allows you to uh, generate the iterations, or number of times it does it, sort of cycles through the loop, um, using the timeline. I'll try and get this all sorted out. Uh, right, you see my little red dot, that's all you'll see at the moment. There's nothing else is happening. Oh, I hate this bloody thing. I can, can never get, find the blooming little didgeridoo. All right, we'll get that all lined up. And we'll just undo that and put the iterations in. You see there's 262 there. alter them Oop, down to nothing it will go minus um, just watch that uh, you see it's just drawing it now 372 goes wonderful now if we want to alter the pattern we can uh, step size is not super critical 10 is probably a bit much it to uh, slows the computer down so I tend to leave it about five um, large radius and different pattern again small radius and you can stop anywhere you like anytime you find distance basically seems just to turn the thing inside out it's all rather wonderful up the step size a bit I'll put it to 10 just see if it makes a bit smoother it'll probably slow the job right down well sort of it does sort of it doesn't um, anyway the expression's working that's fine um, I could no doubt just duplicate these um, you know just copy the whole thing and uh, have different colored lines so could have two or three lines all different colors I'll try that in, in a bit when I finish just recording all this I expect everybody's finding this extremely boring but I'm thrilled to bits um, I'll just show you something else while we're here I've shown you how to put that on uh, the bevel on the curve um, just, just uncouple that, I'll get it. You see we've got a sort of neon glow effect here. Very impressive. I only found this the other day. If we go into material, the Bezier curve, which is what this is. Bezier curve, not the circle. Go into material. And base colour is well the blue, but you could have it anything you like. I bump metallic right up. Um, roughness could be nothing or whatever you like. 
uh, speculate. If roughness is nothing, speculate can turn off as well. It doesn't make any difference. It's not doing anything. And then we come down here and we've got a blend mode in settings. And uh, we haven't got a shadow, so we don't need to bother with that. And default is opaque. You see, no glow. And I only found this, it's brilliant. Additive gives us glow. Multiply basically will virtually give you nothing as you'd expect. Alpha clip again not doing anything really. But uh, additive, well, something new. Uh, put speed uh, refraction on, but uh, again, it's doing next to nothing. Uh, it's a very simple thing. And that's about it for today.